radiation uh, lawsuits are very, very, very difficult to prove. Um, one person, Dr. Chris Busby, has won almost every, I think he's won every lawsuit that he was an expert witness in. And uh, he was able to do it because he's British. He's not American. He was an expert witness here in the U.S. on the Simi Valley uh, nuclear disaster in uh, North, in Los Angeles. And uh, he won that lawsuit. Rocketdyne had a facility there in Simi Valley, uh, which is in the no- northern part of L.A., and um, they were operating a an, a an experimental or a research reactor uh, because they were developing X-ray lasers for space weapons. Now um, he uh, went to Los Angeles for the law firm representing. Uh, maybe 35 or 40 children, the parents had filed this lawsuit, uh, who had extremely rare cancers or died of very rare cancers. And uh, the parents wanted to, they knew it was rocket dying. They wanted, you know, they wanted their day in court. And Chris uh, finally tested the groundwater and discovered that there were very fresh, very short half-life fission products in the groundwater, the drinking water, which means that the reactor had to be operational at the time that he took the the samples because some of the short half-lives are hours or minutes or days, uh, whatever. And um, when he got the results back, and, and there were fish and fresh fish and products in, in the in the groundwater. He went straight to the law firm and gave them the data and explained what it meant, interpreted it for them. They took it to the uh, uh, the defendant's law firm, the one representing Rocketdyne, and Rocketdyne immediately quietly settled out of court. They didn't want a court. Uh, judgment or a precedent set, and they paid uh, $250 million to those plaintiffs. Uh, Nobody's ever heard of that out of court because every single person in Los Angeles has been exposed to Rocketdyne uh, fission products, and everyone in L.A. could sue Rocketdyne if they knew. So um, that had two meltdowns. There was one in 19, 1963 and I, uh, an earlier one, I believe it was 1957. And I believe that 1957 was the first meltdown in the United States of a nuclear reactor. Yes, and the one that happened a few years later that I, I found in an interview with a former worker at the site, she indicated that the second incident, they had lost 80% of the cladding on the fuel rods during that meltdown, and no yeah. one was ever even told about that accident. I know. I, I know a woman who um, is a secretary for G. Edward Griffin, who is, um, he writes books, uh, he wrote the, the Creature of Jekyll Island on, on the Federal Reserve. And she contacted me because she said, I have cancer of the eye, and I used to jog on the the public pathways around the Santa Susana site that Rocketdyne was, where they were operating this uh, reactor, research reactor. And I said, well, you were exposed to fission products while you were out there jogging. And um, I don't know whether she's completely lost her eye yet or not, but she's still trying to file a lawsuit. Now, so I I put her in touch with uh, Dr. Busby. That reactor, all reactors in the United States have to be licensed by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the um, 
the pre predecessor was the Atomic Energy Commission. It's now the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. And you can't operate a nuclear reactor in the United States without an NRC license to operate. That, the NRZ had revoked the Rocketdyne license to operate that reactor 10 years before he took that water sample and discovered the fission products in it. So they were not only operating a nuclear reactor in a heavily populated urban area, but they were also illegally operating a nuclear reactor for 10 years, and they were never caught. 